Good morning. You all still with us? Do you need a stretch? Because you're not going to get one. <laughs> you stretch the laugh muscles. Um, the founder of Apple Computers was talking to a man named John Scully who was uh, working for Pepsi Cola. And he was continually trying to recruit Scully to come and work as the president of Apple. And John Scully continued to refuse uh, the re re recruitment until one day the founder looked at him dead in the eye and he said to him, John, do you want to spend the rest of your life selling sugared water or do you want a chance to change the world? Do you want to spend the rest of your life selling sugared water or do you want a chance to change the world? John Scully said that that one question was so monstrous to him, one to which he did not have an answer for, that it utterly changed and rearranged the priority, priorities of his life. He ended up leaving his job at Pepsi and taking that job uh, with Apple computers. And um, it's interesting to me that John uh, Gordon McDonald would say, the power of one question, it alters things. It ignites thoughts, it can demand commitment, it reveals depths and shall shallowness in a person's soul. It discloses, it discloses hidden agendas, and it even rearranges priorities. You know, the other day I was out on campus for a little bit, and I just thought, you know, I'm going to start asking people, what's the most important question that you've been asked that's changed your life? Think about that for a second. What's the most important question that you've been asked that has changed your life? And as I took that little survey, here was uh, a few th responses that I got back. One person said, the question that I was asked is, what are you afraid of? Another person uh, told me, said, the most important question was, do you take this woman as your lawfully wedded wife? <laughs> that would change your life. Another person says, what do you want to be remembered for when you die? How about this one? This came from a drunk man on an airplane. What do, you, what do you want people to know about your values? Imagine that conversation. Are you filled with the Holy Spirit today? I think the most important question that changed my life was, Shauna, do you know how to ask Christ into your life? That question radically changed my life. I'll ask you this morning, um, because the, the master of questions was Jesus. He was a master at it. His leadership had the ability to ask a powerful question in such a way that it wasn't just to get information from people, but it had the ability to diagnose someone's soul. What was going on in the depths of the person? What were some of those questions that Jesus asked? He said, what are you afraid of? Where is your faith? Who do you say that I am? Do you want to get well? Do you love me? The power of a question that Jesus would ask, it forced people into self-discovery. It helped people to repent. It helped them to rearrange their priorities. And can I maybe just suggest to us today that we stop and hit the pause button in all of this holy living talk and take for a moment to imagine a campus. Imagine a campus where we stop passing by each other and we begin to connect through questions, through, through seeing each other, through asking each other questions that really shows true care and concern for the person that's walking past me, whether it be a student, a faculty member, or a fellow staff member. To truly connect and to diagnose what's going on in their heart, what's going on in the state of their soul. Professors, can you imagine how much a one well-placed question could say more than the words of a three-hour lecture. Can you imagine the look on a student's face if you looked at them and said, how can I help you get to where you want to go? How can I help you live the life that God is calling you to live? Imagine that. Staff, people that work in, in financial aid, imagine the, the angry student who comes into your office going, why do I still have an account balance? And you're able to look at them and say, is there something going on in your family's life that has caused you to be in this situation? 
Can we pray about this? How can I pray for you in this? Imagine talking to a parent on the phone and say, Sir, ma'am, how can I pray for you today? Instead of passing each other on the sidewalk going, how are you today, and hearing the robotic answer of, oh, I'm fine, imagine if we started asking each other, staff and staff and faculty and staff and staff and faculty and students, how are you really doing? How can I help you carry your burden today? How can I pray for you? Imagine how that one question could ignite self-discovery and rearrange priorities and allow for spiritual growth and even bring repentance. But you know what? The reality for all of us, that's hard because we have to hit the pause button. We have to take time to see the person in front of us. We have to have a person-focused response instead of a business-focused response. It requires us to slow down. It requires me to listen to the Holy Spirit as I'm engaging with the person in front of me. And it takes time to engage someone's heart. Do you want to take the time to engage someone's heart? You might be thinking, I don't, I don't have time. My, my work day is too full. I don't have time. I don't have time to mentor. I, would, I don't even have time to check all the messages that are on my phone. When am I going to mentor? May I suggest to you that we don't have time not to. My last thought to you, um, and to leave you with a couple questions. Are our questions that we're asking the people in front of us, are they just sugared water? Or do they really have the power to change an individual who ultimately can change our world? And men and women, is it worth the cost? Jesus said, count the cost. Is it worth the cost of being a world changer? And the next thought you might have, well, where do I even start asking questions? We've put in your handy little packet today 99 <laughs> wondering questions. Because it's really at the heart and the belief that questions can build the, can build the bridge between where somebody is really, what they're really showing me from the outside and what's really going on in their heart. Is it worth the cost of being a world changer? Dave's going to come up and just share a little bit about the impact of mentoring in his life. And by the way, go Cougars. <laughs>